And in that, it was teaching you how to implement visualization tactics and mental imagery into an athlete's performance, um, basically out of the gym in order to, or out of their respective field in order to uh, produce a likelihood outcome of achieving what they want when it comes time to the competition. So the very first thing that uh, I did was, I, I was reading it, it was the very first time pretty much in university that I was like genuinely enjoying a course. So normally I'm just like, ah, I'm just doing it because it's school and I gotta do it. And this one I was interested in because I was, this can actually apply to me. I can do a case study on myself. And what I would do is, I was thinking and, you know, visualizing the very perfect day, because this was exactly what I was told to do in the textbook, to visualize the perfect day. So what I mean by that is in every single aspect, you have to think of it. It's not like before I was like, yes, I did the training, I did the hard work, and I, I got through the reps, now it's time to show up on game day, and I would. But like I mentioned, I walked out of, and there's 3,000 people watching. So if you make a mistake, well then there's 3,000 people staring at you in the face and you just fucked up in front of the world. That's how it feels. So I got nervous and I was younger and then what I realized was when I read that it was so gleamingly obvious that I did not mentally prepare for a meet in my entire life. I just showed up. I was always like super uh, ambitious and motivated to get my training but I never actually implemented this into producing my outcome that I wanted. So what I realized was I need to think about everything when it comes to a meet. I need to think about the warm up, what I'm gonna wear that day, how the, my gym bag will feel when I pick it up and walk in for weigh-ins, seeing my competition there and not feeling scared but feeling motivated to beat them. Um, everything, I would literally visualize every single thing. So like, use your five senses. If you guys wanna implement this, and I highly suggest it, is to implement it into your training, to think about everything that you want to get your goal. Set out your goals and then think, okay, well, what do I need to do in order to hit? What's my last warm up? What's my opener? What's my second gonna be? What's my third? And I would think of how the crowd, how the announcer would be like, Josh Hancock from Canada. And I would literally like close my eyes and think about it. And I was getting so inspired. Meanwhile, I'm just literally laying home in my bed at night at 10 p.m. Um, so, this is one thing that I started to do, and what I realized was, when I started to do that, I then became, in, I came into a meet, and instead of feeling like having anxiety and being nervous, I now had a lot of confidence. Because there was actually a study done to show on Olympic athletes that if they, uh, basically, a neuro, uh, neurologist hooked them up to brain activity and said that if they visualized their sport, they would basically send uh, signals to their muscles, their brain would, that simulates their, uh, their, their muscles in the exact same way as if they were actually doing the training. So that's how powerful your mind is. You're, like, when I heard that, I was like, I could literally train three times a day when my competition trains once a day. The competition out there who I'm going against are going out there and they're coming in and they're doing it in the gym. Meanwhile, I have this advantage where I can do it at, at home, before the day starts, go conquer the day, and then do it again at night. So when it comes time for a peak, I get super in the zone. I can turn on tunnel vision, and the world is operating around you, and everyone is trying to pull you in this direction. And for me, I would tune everything out, and literally nothing else mattered except the competition, and the goals that I have, and what I'm gonna do every single day for eight weeks, 24 seven, to hit my goal. Um, so the main thing that I'm trying to say is that if you're, if you're implementing this into your training, like if you gotta do this, and you show up and you're going against someone who is there and, the, and you guys are like, you're at a national event or you're at a world event and you guys wanna win for your country, well you, you better be mentally prepared just, just as much, if not more, than you are physically. Because if not, then I think that the person 
who, I just think that the person who wants it more is always going to prevail. That's just kind of the way that I look at things. Because if you really, really want something, then you're going to do everything it takes in training to get what you want. Uh, instead of, yeah, I kind of want it. So that, that's, I hope that helps with the pressure thing. Like if you think about it, if you're visualizing everything, so you know, okay, I gotta take this jump to get here, and this one, and this one, and that's my last warm up, and this is my first second. You're yeah. so prepared for the meet that you have nothing to be nervous about when you show up. Yeah, I was doing visualization, but just only like say, just the actual lift. Like what it would feel like to you know, get in on the bar. Right. But, but I wasn't doing like the, the entire day and like I wouldn't have my attempt planned out. Right. So I would, I would do it to the point where um, I wouldn't even look at it as, okay, here's my first, second, third. I would do it to the point where I knew what song I would put on. And I would think about the song coming on it and how it would feel. And then to feel my coach like smack me on the back and chalk go everywhere and I was like picturing this in my head where I would then walk out to the platform and feel like basically invincible from like visualizing this. And what I would do then is see myself from three different perspectives. I wanted to feel it and see it and hear it and, and be with it from three different standpoints. From my own standpoint of what it would actually feel like to walk out and see thousands of people and like hear my name and then come out and approach the bar and how it would actually feel and it's going to feel light you don't want it to be like ah, this is going to be heavy you got to be like this is going to be smoke city it's going to be so easy so that's what i was doing i would then instant replay just like you would on a like a sports center or something and i'd watch it from the judge's perspective sit down and watch me i could literally see myself walking out and approaching the bar and I would do that and then the third one would be from uh, the spectators perspective or you can really choose it from your coach's perspective whatever works for you but I would see it from three different vantage points so I would basically for each attempt see three of each attempt before I actually showed up and I was doing that twice a day the morning night in training for eight weeks straight. And I would show up literally knowing for a fact that no one in that room wanted to win more than me. That's, that's, whether or not that's true, that's how I would convince myself. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much like what I would do. You, I, would, I wouldn't look at just the feel, see it, literally be one with it. Sounds that you're gonna hear, uh, like I would even do taste like so for me on game day like I drink uh, Gatorade after a lot of people do that after they weigh in so I feel like what well, would feel like to open the Gatorade after you're like super super thirsty because you're you just cut a lot of weight open it and think about how good it's going to taste when you drink that and then now it's time to, to compete uh, so I kind of implemented everything I possibly could into my training and it just so happened that when I did that I had a meet uh, like when I was in that course that I was telling you about, that I was doing my studies and then I had a meet at the end. So I wrote the final exam, did the meet, best performance I did to date at that point. So uh, it has a massive carryover. It you know reduces the likelihood of uh, error in a meet and certainly uh, increases your confidence. Uh, so I mean, if if people, if, if someone wants to elevate their performance to the next level. I can't think of a better way, and I think that mental imagery, mental training, what it actually takes inside of someone's head to succeed uh, is the most grossly underestimated thing on the planet, like, period. I was actually asking a good question on that. Sure. It sort of links back to the PQ. Uh, everything you just said there, does that actually have any relation to why you make those, say, like, heavy singles? week after week when you're peaking, and then you drop down and do working sets. Right. Do you try and simulate like everything, the visualization, all those senses for that every single Is that why you like to do that? That's not necessarily um, what you're talking about is so basically in my training before my working sets, uh, just say my working sets was I'll choose uh, 
230 uh, for sets of three or something. I might go up to 240 for one drop back. That's not necessarily, yes, while it builds confidence, and yes, that's when it's uh, time to peak, that's just because it's actually practicing the movement. It's actually me handling weights that I in, will be in the range of what I will be uh, on game day. So that's more of a specificity thing sure. as opposed to uh, sp specifically for athletes like yeah. yeah. But I mean, that, that helps. For me, uh, especially, like if I hit something in training that's really, really good, yeah. well, of course I'm assuming it's going to be really good on, uh, on the competition. And the gold single, the gold single for uh, as we go along, or are they yep. the set of them? Yep. So, uh, when it comes to uh, like peaking, about one week out from the event, I'm going to hit my second attempt. Uh, and then the week prior is going to be my opener. So, in training, physically, besides like everything you do in your head, uh, I'm actually handling my oper opener twice, because the week before and then the week after, and my second attempt. So, I'm actually getting into two. Uh, the lifts for the squat and the bench that I would do um, in the meet. Whereas like that looks a little different and that's simply because it tires me out more so it only work up to an opener in training. I wouldn't go past an opener. No more than 90% when it comes to uh, peaking. So. Any, any other questions about 